guys, welcome! In this video, we'll be featuring some tips and tricks for beginners in the new mobile MMORPG Dragon Raja. Dragon Raja is a mobile game based off of a long-standing Chinese novel, so it already has quite a fan base. It's powered by Unreal Engine 4, so it prides itself with its amazing graphics. And when I say amazing, I mean quite impressive for a mobile game. There are a lot of maps to explore and the gameplay is just smooth. I've been playing it for weeks now and so far I can say that the quality is next level for a multiplayer open world mobile game. So based on that alone, you may be interested in checking it out. Before we begin though, I do have to mention that it's only currently available in China, Taiwan, the Americas, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. It does not have a Southeast Asia server yet, but if you are from Southeast Asia, you can play it by installing the APK for Android or by changing your country in the App Store for iOS. If you are interested in trying this game, there is a great deal of activities, events, tales, and quests waiting for you, and hopefully these tips and tricks may help kickstart your journey. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, let's start with character creation. There are four classes we can choose from, and in each of those classes, we can choose a male, female, or lead the character. My first tip would be on the overview of the classes. A Blade Master is a melee type job which functions both as a tank and a damager. If you enjoy PvP, I suggest you try the Blade Master as it has a lot of crowd control skills in its arsenal plus it's tanky. Next we have the Gunslinger which is a ranged DPS. If you want to focus on firepower then this may be for you. They also have decent mobility can set traps, and hide from enemies. Up next we have the Assassin, which is a DPS class with two sets of skills, melee and ranged skills. They both have single attack and AoE skills which are useful for clearing PvE instances. Notably for combat, they have a blink skill for mobility and an immunity skill for survivability. And last but not the least, we have the Soul Dancer, which is a support class of the game. You can build this to be either a support type or a DPS mage type, but either way, this class is a combination of damage and survivability. It has buffs, heals, crowd control, and damaging skills in its kit. Don't worry though if you are unsure of what to choose since there is an option to change class once you're inside the game. Next, you'll be able to fully customize your look for your chosen character. There are a lot of tweaks you can do so you can take your time beautifying your character. Once you're inside the game, my next tip would be to follow the story quest. Since Dragon Raja is based on a novel, you'll quickly realize that this game is heavily focused on its story. At the beginning, you'll witness a lot of animated storylines which you can choose to either indulge in or to skip. I'd recommend you guys to listen to it as you can customize your character's personality based on your answers on the story. But if you do decide to skip, you can rewatch the scenes by clicking Q in the upper right of the game interface, then the third tab, Dream. The next thing you need to focus on are doing the various events found in the upper middle part of the main interface. There are daily tasks, time limited events, and weekly challenges you can try. You can click on the calendar icon on the upper left of the events to see an overview of the time limited activities. Some of the events are kind of fun like this car racing one. A few of the daily events change periodically as well so it doesn't get boring. Every time you complete an event, it counts towards your activity points which give rewards for each milestone. In general, try to aim for at least 120 activity points to get a chance at a rare equipment. Alright, up next, let's talk about gears. As you progress and complete events, you'll get equipment drops or you can purchase them from the store. 
Generally, higher level 1s and purple quality gears would give a better rating boost versus green or blue quality ones. But furthermore, you can transfer stats from one equipment to another. To know which stats are good for your class, go to your profile and look for the stats which have the M logo beside it. That means those are the recommended stats. In addition, each class have a different element. Blade Master is Fire Attack, Gunslinger is Wind Attack, Soul Dancer is Water Attack, and Assassin is Earth Attack. Having the correct element for your class will boost your damage. Another feature for gears are the Draconics or Drac. These are rare gear stats which are obtained by chance when you open an equipment pack. Each equipment slot have different Dracs that can be unlocked. If you get this, consider yourself lucky as they provide various boosts and bonuses. In addition, you can also obtain Draconic gear from the Draconic Exchange NPC in Castle College. You'll need the Lost Whisper item which are obtained from this assembling level 40 or higher epic gear. Lastly, for gears, you can enhance them to boost your stats. This is one of the many ways we can increase our rating and damage. Up next for your skills, we have various skill sets to cover. This first step is your main class skills. So for example, for Soul Dancers, your page will look something like this. To name a few skills, we have Azure Mark, which is a damaging skill, Recall Light for heals and buffs, and Soul Dancers pack to link to an ally which provide buffs. At the upper right, you can even customize the order of release of skills during auto. The next tab are the talent, which are further customizations for your class. This allows for flexibility on how you want to build your character. For example, for soul dancers, perhaps if you want to go more support type, then for your C-level talent, choose soul link for HP transfer. But if you're going DPS, then Ballet in the Snow may be an option which increases damage at expensive healing. Next, we have the EX skills. The customizable ones are these two located at the lower left of your main skills. These blue ones at the right are unique to your class, while the red middle ones and yellow ones are the same for all job types. Basically, these are bonus skills which add another layer of customization. For example, for the Soul Dancer EX, we have either the Light Beacon, which is a powerful heal and movement speed buff, or the Time Zero, which is a crowd control damaging skill, which also provides movement speed debuff to the target. For the next tab, we have the Plan, which allows you to prepare your skill combinations to cater to different scenarios. And lastly, we have Sigil, which gives various stat boosts. You can upgrade these using these Cypher runes obtained from events, and your club contribution. Up next, we have allies. These are your partners in the battlefield which deal damage and provide bonus stats and effects. Generally, higher star allies are favorable with 6 stars being the highest. You can obtain them via recruitment. If you stay online and participate in events, you can get a free normal recruit role which have a chance to drop 2-4 to four star allies. Whereas you'd need diamonds or coupons for the special favor recruit for a chance at a 5 or 6 star ally. Placing an ally on the center position means you'll be able to inherit its passive skill. Be mindful of the ally bonds as they give bonus effects. For example, Anjo's bond here with Koshi gives a decrease in cooldown. Also, on your bounty, you can deploy your allies in exchange for rewards. Alright, another important feature of the game is the core, which is where we can inlay gems to boost our stats. This has four faces corresponding to the four different elements. Gems can only be embedded into slots on the face of a similar stat. Allocating the number of gems for each element will depend on your build. As an overview, Earth gems give con for defense, Fire Gems give in for Magic Attack classes and Strength for Physical Attack classes. Water Gems give ins for cooldown reduction. 
and Wind Gems give Dex for Attack and Multi Strike. These stat effects affect each class differently. So to check, go to your profile and click the exclamation icon at the bottom right for the complete details. The core is one of the main ways we can improve our rating and stats so you may invest your diamonds in leveling up your elemental gems, as higher level gems give more rating and better effects. Next, another cool feature of the game are the motors. You can unlock these by completing the crafting materials which can be either obtained from quests, sold by NPCs, or bought from the store. Some motor materials are obtained for free from events. They also have a level and rating requirement. Again, motors are also one of the key ways to boost your rating. Every time you unlock a motor, refit or change their design, change their color or add to its evolution points, your rating will increase. Up next for my second to the last tip, go ahead and explore the career. Aside from doing dailies and quests, we can choose to have a career in this game. Currently, we can choose either Cuisine or Superstar. Unlocking each career level will give upgrade rewards. To fulfill the requirements, just click Go on the aspect you want to enhance. Each activity will consume Vitality which has a daily cap, so it may take some time to progress as your career gets higher. Aside on working on your promotion, you can also create goods which can be sold for diamonds at the store. And last but not the least, we have the club. A club is an important feature in the game as it is your entry ticket to club-specific events which give various rewards. Donating to the club also gives guild points needed for upgrading your sigil. It's also an avenue for you to of course meet new people and have friends to complete team challenges with. But aside from team events and whatnot, I think the open world design of the game really allows for you to meet people online, hang out and have fun in all the gorgeous maps and interactions this virtual playground has to offer. If you don't feel like doing any of the quests, just exploring the various maps is a treat in itself. As a bonus tip, here are some codes you can enter to claim rewards. Just go to settings and choose CD key. Enter each code to instantly get your rewards via mail. I'm not sure about the expiry of these codes but currently they are active as of the posting of this video. Also for a cheat sheet of what to do, go to your profile then click up to see a list of ways on how to get stronger, how to get EXP, and how to get various in-game currencies and items. Alright, these are my top tips that I think would be useful for when you first play the game. As I've mentioned earlier, the game is loaded with a lot more features and tales and we're barely scratching the surface. As with any RPG game, it may be overwhelming at first so I don't want to overload this video with too much information. But surely enough, there will be more tips and guides coming your way so stay tuned for that. Special thanks to my subscriber Ferric for suggesting this game. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.